what, what had happened is part of, when in your trip you indicated that, uh, that you were going through and looking for uh, additional adverse impacts and stuff. And, uh, and what we had done in realizing that probably you'd be putting out a preliminary scope of study, which is due some, at the earliest sometime in mid, mid February. What we had done collectively as, as a town is we, uh, we got together to uh, review uh, what has been done in the past. I mean, this community, as you know, is very different from any other in, in the fact that you folks have been here for a number of years. We've gone through EISs. We've had uh, involved agencies uh, reviewing these EISs and what have you. So what we did uh, to, uh, to fulfill our part of this identifying issues is we, we sat down collectively, had a couple of meetings, and, uh, and had people go back and review some of those comments that came in from involved agencies. And, and, and what we did is we, we put those together in a list. And, and so what you, what you have here is, is more or less, many of the, as you know, many of the issues you've already identified in your view, and many of the impacts and stuff. There are a few that we have here that, that are new that you didn't use, that weren't in your list. But, uh, but the other thing is also with an issue, you find that through most of the particularly environmental stuff, uh, we've gone through and pulled out uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the comments that were in some of these reviews for involved agencies, notably the DSC, the Fish and Wildlife Service, and they are, and, and a lot of those comments were related to particular things and impacts that weren't covered or they weren't covered properly or what, uh, what have you been part of. So we have provided that as, as, as background information and we tried to summarize each of those, uh, of those impacts and, and really what we would hope that, that people could address. In that. And, and our sense was, I don't know whether you whether you want to go down by these these things uh, item by item, or whether I mean in, in practical terms, what we would hope is that we know you're going to be putting together what they call the PSS for those folks that are out here, preliminary scoping statement. If uh, if you uh, the, the main purpose of this is to have you address these things and hopefully be included in that PIP uh, at the time you submit. So that, that's, that's our main hope, and that's our main thought, is that we include that when we do the preliminary scoping study. If you want to go through those right now, if that, uh, if that would be helpful to you, we'd be more than welcome to do it. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to review the document, and if you want to walk through it, we'd be happy to listen to it. Well, okay. I want to just go through the, uh, each of the items that we have here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first part has to do with, uh, with the issues that relate to our, not necessarily what was in your impact statement, not necessarily what was in the involved, uh, involved agency reviews, but these are things that relate to our plan, relate to uh, the Article 10 rules and what have you. Uh, first one was a comprehensive plan, and the Article 10 rules state that they, uh, that in your proposal, you're supposed to make some sort of a comment or determination on whether uh, your project proposal is compatible with, uh, with the town's comprehensive plan. And we would ask that when you do that, it's not just to focus on the 2012 plan, but to go back on the, on the plan we had back in 2003, because that really did uh, very much set the tone about what what this community stands for. And that was in place prior to the time we had any kind of wind development on the town. Uh, Second issue is sleep deprivation. That was, that's a concern of, uh, of particularly from the noise impacts. Uh, one of the principal concerns in health-related issues is, uh, is sleep deprivation. That was crossed out of the rules. Originally, it was in uh, the rules, if you recall, if you involved in that, was, it was deleted. But uh, we as a community feel that that's an important part. Our zoning law is all about, and we went through and revised that about the health, safety, and general welfare, and sleep deprivation is something we would like to address. And, and notably right here, we want to do like to see some type of a comprehensive assessment of the impacts and what have you based on the review of the literature. Wind turbine noise, uh, we have an extensive part in our law on that as well. What we would like is when you do the, uh, when you do your, uh, your impact analysis, that you recognize what we have in our law in terms of limits. Uh, the uh, Article 10 rules, did not have anything specifically related to that. They said you can handle that by a case-by-case -case basis. So we have provided, uh, just to let you know, we're talking about 35 DBA at night, 40 DBA in the evening, and uh, 45 DBA during the day. Uh, a new, a relatively new uh, item is, uh, the, the issue is a new, I should say, infrasound and low frequency sound. But what is new is, uh, is an important study that was done in Wisconsin Public Service Commission that was submitted in, uh, just last month. 
And uh, the, the interesting part of that is there were four acoustical consulting firms that were involved in that study, and they all confirmed that, uh, that there are the opinion that enough evidence and, hypo and hypotheses have been given here to classify uh, low frequency noise and infrasound as a serious issue possibly affecting the future of the industry. And uh, those, uh, those consultants were, were David Hessler and Hessler Associates, which actually was the, uh, was the, the consultant for, uh, for you folks at BP and also at Neoma. So that's that's important fact that he was involved in the study, as well as Paul Shelmer, who was a consultant here for, uh, for Winpeg and doing a, an independent assessment here on town. So we would like we would like you to address that that issue in particular reference to that study. Uh, turbine failure. Uh, that really hasn't been addressed, but all the issues in our law that relate to setbacks, we have, we felt from the standpoint of health and safety, it should be it shouldn't be just setbacks shouldn't be determined by what what's comfortable for the industry and what they would like to to uh, in terms of how to maximize their their, their project and what have you. But it ought to be based on concerns about turbine failure, whether it's the tips, whether it's the entire road, or what have you. That really has to do an engineering study. And that's what we did in our community. We had our, the town's engineers come in and do that kind of analysis. But, but I think you're in a position to really do a far better one than that, seeing how you are part of the industry. Uh, shadow flicker, we, uh, that's standard fare. You have mentioned that. The only thing we would do differently on that is we were suggesting that you don't limit it to impact to 1,000 feet that you go further beyond that. And that you don't, you don't use, uh, in terms of the analysis, uh, a window, a receptor that's uh, one meter square that, that you really think in terms of a much broader uh, target for, uh, for assessing the shadow flicker. The other thing is we're concerned about fire protection and emergency response. You had that in your impact anyway, but uh, just, to, just to underscore that. Uh, cost of facilities. Uh, cost of, uh, I know this is, a, this is an issue with some of the developers. They don't like to expose too much of what they do financially, but you'll find that in the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service and others have said, you know, if we're, to, if we're to really be able to look at a benefit cost uh, analysis of this stuff, we've got to know what the benefits are, and you've got to be a little more forthcoming with, uh, with your financials to do that. Uh, stray voltage, another issue. Now, the second part, what we're doing is we're getting into the issues when we went back and reviewed uh, the, uh, the reviews from uh, the involved agencies. And the first one we have there is <clears throat> cross geography. I don't know whether you're familiar with that. Uh, somewhere along the line, if you've read those reviews in the past for, uh, for our uh, involved agencies and some of the EISs that was brought up. The important thing here is everyone recognizes it's going to be done, but, uh, but BP and Asiana, even at the urging of the town's engineers, you never really conducted these studies beforehand, before that you could evaluate them from the standpoint of EIS. What they did is they put it off, and, uh, and they said, well, we'll do this at the time, at the time we're actually involved in construction. And the interesting thing is town's engineers argued bitterly that, uh, that uh, they ought to be doing that prior to making any determination on that. And so also you will find out that uh, as you can see right here, the whole host of agency reviews as well, saying, you got to do that. So we're saying, in effect, as they have said before, you ought to be doing that as part of the assessment prior to the act, once you get an application going on. Uh, cumulative analysis, you've, you've noted that uh, as, as something to do, but you also know that all the agency reviews, basically what they're, what they're indicating is that they want to be a Want it to be more extensive and to be, have a regional impact, not just a uh, neighboring uh, wind farm or two. The other thing that, that you, you really got to get involved when I saw your SDEIS on the uh, on the cumulative impacts, you just talked in very qualitative terms. In fact, it wasn't a number once mentioned. And you really got you got to do this kind of thing. What it's all about is how many birds and bats does a uh, does a windmill plover and kill. And then expand that by the numbers uh, in, in terms of your impact. So you really got it's a it's an analytical thing. It's a number thing. It's not just a qualitative thing that you're talking about. 